Hi, my name is Deborah. I am so pleased to be with you here today and to be with these two amazing human beings. Um, we're here to kick off the 10th anniversary SOCAP conference. We want to launch this year's gathering by celebrating where we are after 10 years and imagining where we will be 10 years from now. I'm seeing that I need to do this. There we go. Um, we want to articulate the anatomy of a movement. We want to celebrate how the mind, the body, the heart, and the soul of this social impact movement can, if we are willing, dance. So happy birthday, SOCAP. What an extraordinary thing. 10 years ago, a small group of people, visionary people, co-created a gathering to begin to acknowledge and fuel the potential of an emerging movement, one where meaning and where impact matters as much, if not more, than money. Like many of the artists that I get to work with every day, they set out to create something that they could not yet see. And I think it is our challenge to again do that. What is it that we cannot see and what we, will we create together in the next 10 years? They laid the ground for a future, future possible inspired by an urgent need for an alternative reality. One where social and environmental impact drive the way we deploy our resources and what we need in return. As a result, so much has happened. So much has been accomplished. New enterprises, new investment strategies, new business models, new possibilities. Yet, despite the gorgeous momentum, are we moving? Is culture shifting? Are we there yet? Do we have equity? Have we ended racism, hatred, bigotry? Is the wealth gap closing? And have we achieved income equality, climate change, sea level rise? The question is, do we care, truly care enough about one another that we will co-create a future of shared prosperity together? The question is, do we understand our interconnectedness? Are we dancing yet? The great James Baldwin said, not everything that is faced can be changed, but nothing can be changed if it is not faced. As we stand on the strength of 10 years of momentum, I invite us to courageously acknowledge what we have not yet accomplished, to definitively name what is still broken, and to boldly ask, what does it mean to create a system of shared prosperity that honors the unique and valuable assets that every human being, every community can bring to the table? Are we willing to tr see and truly regard one another's power? Are we willing to redefine what we mean by assets and what we mean by value? Will we together be able to come to a place of collective compassion where we are not only saddened by tragedy, by injustice, by inequity, but we feel and act upon the urgency, the actual consequences, no matter how close or far away? Are we willing? Oops, sorry, the first person has to make a few mistakes. I am imagining our next 10 years and a future that thrives on abundance and generosity. This abundant ecosystem de-emphasizes transactional interchange and emphasizes deep and lasting relationships. This ecosystem prioritizes shared prosperity and collective well-being. In this ecosystem, we see and value assets of all kinds creating the possibility for thriving public life um, and, and the possibility for us to see and actually acknowledge the things that we forget to value today. Language skills, intergenerational knowledge, youth leadership, art, culture, and tradition. These things make up 
are neighborhoods. They are vibrant. They are uniquely fascinating, beautifully diverse, and healthy places. In this e ecosystem, investments trans transcend material gain, and we take the time we need to save this planet. Oops, again. This ecosystem thrives on diversity of thought and life experience and fuels emerging culture that can instigate change. Indeed, change starts with cultural movement. It takes hold with cultural shift. It starts with cultural movement. Change takes hold with cultural shift. The great societal strides, think of marriage equality, think of environmental justice, reproductive rights, civil rights, those that have resulted in positive, lasting, and powerful forward movement have inevitably sparked from a cultural shift, a change in our hearts, a change in our minds, a change in what our bodies are willing to withstand. And this is the change that we need today, and we must nurture cultural shift and continue to care for it, or we will lose ground. So as we stand on 10 years of movement, I believe that our call to action is to continue the work of shifting to a culture of equity, a true culture of equity that values collective abundance and shared prosperity. At long last, we will indeed be dancing. I think the greatest social movements emphasize not our differences, but our interconnectedness and our interdependence, which allows us to feel not helpless, hopeless, disconnected, but helpful, hopeful, and together. I share this moment from an art and urban prototyping festival that happened not long ago on Market Street here in San Francisco. In just these few seconds, we're reminded that creativity deployed can transcend barriers, whether they're streets, oceans, political and social divides. This little boy is communicating with the people through play, through light, through sound, across multiple lanes of traffic, he reminds us that we can find one another and we can find joy amidst it all. <laughs> so, what do you say? Shall we dance together? Let's dance into this conference and into the next 10 years. We can do it. Thank you. How are you all doing this evening? Are you, are you really good? Or are you just making it up? You're really good? Awesome. I start with this slide because I'm starting with where I am in this work as an average black woman startup who raised about $43,000 rather than the 1.3 million, the average, that's raised by failed startups in the US. We can't have this conversation about how we fund social impact, how we fund movement without talking about the heart, about talking about our hearts and where we allow our hearts to lead our resources, our time, our money, right? So I'm gonna ask you all to do an activity for me. So I'm, I don't really, I'm not so much this conferency kind of girl. So I'm gonna ask you to do some unconferency things. Is that okay? Awesome. So I'm gonna ask you if you have something in your hands, you'll probably need to put them down as super connected human beings, connected to digital things more than we are connected to each other, right? So I'm gonna ask you to do something, I'm ask you to put your hands together and rub them together and create some friction with your hands, all right? And when that hand feels really warm, I want you to place it on your heart. And I want you to let yourself be present to your heartbeat. Let yourself be present to this, this muscle inside of each of us that ought to be where we do this work from, that ought to be what leads us to how we spend our money, how we spend our time, who we see, who we do not see. And with your hand on your heart, I want you to just be with me for a moment. Take a moment and consider, how did you get here? Yes, here in that chair, but also a here that is beyond a finite point on a map. 
not the registration table at SOCAP, but here as in this particular junction of your heart? How did you become part of this contagious epiphany called impact? In a garden overwrought with the weed of greed, how have you held the tiny bud of your, of your humanity intact? What does your heart know? And how? And why? Does your heart know altruism is a lie? That we are not called to be saviors, but to recognize that the world that works for the least of those is the world that works for me. That the work of true liberation demands our labor in service towards a freedom for us all. We chant, save the planet, and she sighs, exhales Hurricane Maria, exhausted by our hubris. How are we 80% water and still do not know our own names? How has she, all she has ever known is the dark, dark art of resurrection while all we've seemed to master is the inevitability of dying? The heart knows nothing you do is selfless. Stop trying and trust that the planet is not waiting for us to save her. The planet is waiting for us to save us. The heart knows the ego is a trap door. Describing not only what we fall through, but what we fall for, how easily we are lured into believing that this is about the widgets we made, the check we wrote, believing the antidote to the chasm of injustice we seek will come through a convertible note. Only understanding equity as the portion we take, not the portion we give. Using our investment to build bunkers, instead of a bridge. The heart knows risk is not how much money we will lose. Risk is being refused health care because of your gender or your race. Risk is dying in 2017 of diseases we developed the science to eradicate 60 years ago. Risk is the choice between feeding your family today or filling your gas tank to make it to work to feed them tomorrow. The heart knows that we do not know the risk of this sort of sorrow and that we have so much less than most to lose. The heart chooses to focus on who is not in the room. I want you to take a moment and look around the room. We are grateful for the people who are here, but I want you to look for who is not here. Tell, share with your neighbor really quickly, who do you not see in the room? That's a heart question, right? The heart begs us to see if we've built an impenetrable fort, a resort for the privileged of good intention. The heart knows intention is not enough. The heart says, I do not have the answers, but I have the resource to help those suffering find their own. The heart asks, how do we transform a fortress into a home by opening the gate? The heart knows we cannot truly celebrate until the SOCAP plenary presenter is a disabled, undocumented trans woman of color who just raised $50 million in a funding round C. The heart knows that equity doesn't necessarily look like you or me, and if it does, we aren't there. The heart knows that there is no bravery without fear. That we cannot find, we cannot fund our way to a better world. We can only become better humans, committed to being better humans to other humans <laughs> until <laughs> We've made a world that works for all of us. 
What are you willing to give up in service to the call to build that vision? What must you alter in your mission to get us there? Black science fiction writer Octavia Butler wrote, everything we touch, we change. And everything we change, changes us. The only constant is change. I know we say that that is our aim. The heart wants to know, are you willing to be changed? What up, though? How y'all doing? Everybody cool? Uh, there's a, a tenant that we believe in here, energetic reciprocity. Yeah, so when I say y'all cool, if you just kind of don't say anything, I'm looking at you in the back, thinking that I don't see you. You, you know what I mean? You ruin the whole thing. So, ha! How you doing? At my American best, I wear my struggles as swagger. I am genetically encoded with my country's history. Every now and then I try to imagine my ancestors and when I close my eyes, what I think I see is probably a blood memory. Deborah talked a little bit about a mindset and Sonia reminded us of the actions of the heart. Uh, they've asked me to describe what the young people refer to as swag. The first thing that pops up in my head is that character is energy and how in this work, energy is not immaterial. Broken energy is as much of an impediment as broken anatomy. So let's get into the body of that so cap swagger. To begin, get into the mind of my almost 16-year-old son. And yes, who the fuck wants to be back in the mind of a teenager? <laughs> But this kid is a visionary, or at least that's what he told me the other night at dinner. Uh, we were talking about his African-American history class and how the teacher uh, is his favorite and all these dope people and how his teacher says they were visionary. So we talk a little bit about what we think that word means and I talk um, about making this opera with Bill T. Jones and how sometimes when he was directing this opera I wrote, he'd get mad at the cast for not seeing what he saw in his head. Eventually my kid says, Dad, I think I might be a visionary. He says, when I'm making music, the things that I hear, he says, and then he closes his eyes for a second like he's taking the first bite of the first hella sweet strawberry in spring. And I'm like, damn. You know, he's found something of which he feels worthy. And whatever the right word for the feeling is, it makes him feel otherworldly. I love my kid, but I'm pretty sure the right word isn't visionary. But the feeling that it might be, the feeling of free, is swag the fuck out. So now we uh, can't just walk around here thinking that we're Stevie Wonder, like my kid. So a sober reminder that we are living in the time of the visas, the wall, the healthcare repeal, the Goldman Sachs cabinet, uh, the drunk at dawn accusations of wiretapping and Kaepernick, the fictional massacres, the actual alliances with Nazis and fascists. We are living in the time of the Muslim ban. Flynn, Sessions, Kushner, the homie Comey. You can't hear the screams for your island while he's on his um, island on a golf course. Um, DeVos, Dodd-Frank, the Yemen attack, Kellyanne, Fact, Soul Toll, Bowling Green in Sweden, abandoning freedom of the press and banning tiny orange hands on the butt a glutton, a constitution gutton, social safety net cutting, Kaiser Heil, Comrade Trumpf, Scalia think alike, justice nominating, self hating, pedophilic rapist, climate science debating, ruling via tweet. He's tweeting at North Korea, yo. Racism 
is so embedded in America that when we protest racism, the average American thinks we're protesting America. Some of our embedded norms are dangerous and unsustainable, including our norms around class, including our tropes about class relative to race and gender. So to do this work is to humbly acknowledge the weight of these realities, which means a near incessant self-assessment of our personal privileges. Doing this work means we gotta check our privileges, dog. The armature of this swagger we're talking about requires that we keep our cynicism at the level of a 15-year-old feeling free in his creative self while keeping our humility humming. Weightless optimism, grave humility. It actually takes some pretty extraordinary gymnastics, but SOCAP, I believe, is a little less about dope projects than it is about great people. We, the people, willing to invest social, intellectual, or financial capital in order to alter the arc of culture. Altering the arc of culture takes heart. In fact, we might want to ask ourselves if our work not only feels exciting, but courageous. Like, on a meter between zero and Harriet Tubman, how courageous is my work? So if I'm building the body of our conference-wide swagger, I'd say the way of the walk wafts like teen spirit, is humble before the task, is a little scared, maybe, but embracing it as fuel. And finally, well, finally, let me uh, share a little bit of this opera I was telling you about. Uh, in 1985, at the climax of a very complex and mortally antagonistic relationship, the Philadelphia police dropped two pounds of C4 explosives on the home of the MOVE organization. The resulting fire killed 11 people, including five children. The opera is about five teenagers in the present day who get in trouble in North Philly and escape across town to occupy the remains of the MOVE house. While they're in the home, uh, they decide that they would rather learn from the ghosts that live in Moves Ashes than from their teachers at school. In our opera, these ghosts are called OGs, and they teach these Philly kids by leaving notes around the house with lessons to grow from. OG say, love yourself, baby. OG say, Just a little louder, please. Sex love. Oh, gee, say time did not reconcile me to my chains. It made me familiar with them. Say black and hear yes. Say black and hear enough. OG say, time did not reconcile me to my chains. It made me familiar with them. Say black and hear yes. Say black and hear enough. Say love is the only word sweeter than black. Somewhere in the swagger is the capacity to weaponize love like how that man John Holliday's voice took that word and stunned us with it. SOCAP, investigate the mindset, incorporate the heart work, and be on the lookout for the swag, 
for the strut of ignorant idealism in a still young body, the gait of a person who was aware that this folly might fail and faces the fear forward sweetly like a love song. Thank you. <laughs>